कश्मीर लाइफ के आज की शुमारी ड्रीम बिग सीजन टू में एक बार फिर से आप सब नाजरीन का इस्तेबाल है आज हमारे साथ मौजूद है सामी उल्ला इन्होंने अपने बैचलर्स इंजीनियरिंग में यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ जम्मू में हासिल किए हैं He has done his masters in nanotechnology from Jamia Millia in Delhi. He has also achieved his PhD in functional nanomaterials from University of Bristol, UK. He has also achieved certain awards and honors like the Zhu Chismet Scholarship, the Chinese Council Scholarship, and the Tsinghua Scholarship from Taiwan. So today we will be interacting with him, and we will get to know how did he grapple and manage to achieve all of it. Thank you so much. uh for joining us today and taking out your precious time for this interaction thank you so much for having me today okay uh sabse pehle to uh aap hame apne bare mein kuch bataiye tell us something about your educational background and so, your journey from your bachelor's degree uh from you know in jammu and to your phd in functional nanomaterials at the university of bristol so bismillahir rahmanir rahim so uh i originally come from tral which is one of the sub districts and uh, popular for very different reasons in kashmir and my primary education was from madrasa taalimul islam it's also called as mti school tral which is up to 10th class and then my secondary level education i got from government higher secondary school boys tral uh, after that i had to make uh, decisions about my career whether to go into engineering or natural sciences although my own uh, liking was to go into natural sciences but my parents they suggested me uh, you know the peer pressure in kashmir they said like everybody is going for engineering and doctor so you should also go for engineering so i went to jammu uh, one of the colleges affiliated to jammu university which is called uh, model institute of engineering and technology might college and i got admission admission in uh, electronics and communication engineering i stayed there for four years and after four years uh i was kind of fed up with the engineering because i didn't see any anything happening in my life in that very field so i started i made up my mind and i i said uh, i talked to my parents i made up my mind and i said i will set up uh, something i will start up something my business uh for earning money and uh, but my mother she wanted me to do some uh, like get the higher education degree she said uh, she pushed me to get the master's degree from somewhere and she really motivated me and she said uh iske baad main aapko kabhi nahi bolungi padhne ke liye bas ek masters degree aap kahin se kar lo i started searching for different colleges and universities and uh that was when i got inter- introduced to the nanotechnology program at jamia millia islamia and i i i just applied for the this program and appeared in the examination and i got selected and did masters for two years the first year and the second the, the half of the second year was taught pro, taught program like you had to go through different courses related to nano science nano technology physics chemistry uh, and also bio, biological sciences and engineering etc because it's a nano technology is like a very interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary program and uh, because i wanted as i said i wanted to go into natural sciences so, so this was something that was uh, aligned to that and i was really interested in that so i talked to my mom and i said uh, i think i might go for a phd as well uh, so i started applying for phds after finishing my masters uh, the, f- the first place that i applied to was taiwan so uh, my me and my friends we were searching for different phd programs and uh, we got to know that there's a university very good university in taiwan which is called the national singhua university uh, the application process is very simple so i uh, i just sent an email to the professor with my application draft my letter statement of purpose cv and applied to the program on the university website and i heard from them and they only take you if they give you the scholarship as well so i got the scholarship i got the admission and i also applied to chinese government scholarship for international students and uh, there as same, same process so i just applied to the university i emailed the professor and i applied to the government uh, to the scholarship on the government website and uh, alhamdulillah i got that as well but the application the, the 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 instructions from the chinese government they came very late to my home through post so by then i had already moved to taiwan uh, so i stayed there for 10 months and i did my research on material science especially 2d two dimensional materials for batteries and supercapacitors 
in the Department of Material Science Engineering in uh, Nano Science and Nano Devices Lab, uh, NTHU Taiwan. And after completing 10 months, I one day got uh, got to know that the University of Bristol in UK has this amazing scholarship for uh, Indian people. So after spending 10, man, 10 months in Taiwan, I one day got to know uh, about the University of Bristol and its uh, and the scholarship it provides for the for the uh, Indian students, especially uh, they mentioned in the scholarship that uh, the preference will be given to Kashmiri uh, origin students. So this is what attracted me. And uh, this scholarship, which which they call as the Suchi, the Zuchi Smith Scholarship that you have mentioned in in the beginning. Um, so I applied to that. Uh, I applied to one of the programs, which is called Functional Nanomaterials PhD program uh, in the School of Physics. I uh, applied to that program. I uh, mentioned in the application that I want to I want to be considered for the Zuchi Sim scholarship for this year. And uh, then I was uh, asked to ap appear for the IELTS exam. I cleared that as well in, while, as, while I was in Taiwan. And then one day I got to know that I have been awarded. And then it was, uh, I, I discussed with my friends because I had already spent, spent 10 months doing PhD work in Taiwan. So everybody said, uh, go for it. So I uh, decided and came back to my country and then did my PhD from UK. Uh, started it in 2018 and finished it in uh, 2023. And now I'm uh, I'm working as a research associate in the School of Earth Sciences, University of Bristol. Samula, like you said that you did your master's in nanotechnology from Grammy Media Delhi. So uh, kindly uh, elaborate what was the subject matter for your master's? So my master's degree was uh, in nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the uh, nanoscience and nanotechnology basically deals with the making and manipulating of uh, things at nanoscale, which is 10 raised to the power minus nine meters. Uh, and it's a very uh, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary program where uh, we get to know things about physics, chemistry, engineering, uh, biosciences as well. Uh, so my the structure of my master's degree was that I uh, uh, we were we were we were meant to learn things in the first year and the half of second year. So basically, uh, eighteen months of taught program and then six months of research. So uh, so. So 18 months I spent in Jamia Mila Islamia in New Delhi and six months I had to look for another uh, institute for doing my uh, project. So I did, which I did in uh, CSI, one of the CSIR labs in Pilani, Rajasthan. My question to you is like, what motivated you to, you know, pursue your doctoral research in uh, functional nanomaterials, which I read from your resume was that specifically focusing on the uh, functionalization of diamond surfaces for thermonic emission. Kindly give us an insight, like what were the major takeaways from As I mentioned, like when I went to CSIR, CD Pilani uh, for doing my master's project, so I worked on graphene-based gas sensors and also drawing inspiration from a master's degree taught program. I was really interested in uh, functional, nanomaterial, functional nanomaterials or the nanoscience in general and also being curious about things from an early age, I wanted to pursue the national science degree as I've been saying from the beginning. So uh, I really wanted to go into nanomaterial based research. So uh, I choose this program, uh, Functional Nanomaterials, because it was something that was very much aligned to what I had been doing in my master's program and my um, master's research project as well. So uh, we, I mean, the, the structure here works something different uh, because we had this program, functional nanomaterials, where we had one year of DART program. You had to, you had, we, I had, I had to go through different courses again at Bristol, and then in the second year, or from the second year, I had, I started my project or uh, my thesis on, as you said, diamond-based uh, materials for thermionic emission. So. Um, this motivated me to do the PhD in functional nanomaterials. The focus of my PhD was in general functional nanomaterials, and uh, I had to go through a taught program in the first year. And from the second year, I started working towards my thesis. My focus was in the field of surface science, where I was studying functionalized uh, diamond surfaces for energy application. Particularly, 
I was investigating the sustainable and efficient uh, means of terminating a diamond surface to produce a low work function and hence make a diamond usable in, applic in applications like thermionic emission where we need a substrate such as diamond to have a very low work function on the surface so that the electrons can be emitted with lesser energy as possible. This involved a number of computational and experimental studies and thankfully I completed it last year uh, in 2000, January, March 20, 2023. So the takeaways from my PhD uh, research where we can use diamond for thermionic emission based devices and diamond can be sustainably terminated within the metal which is non-toxic and abundantly available. We can use it for terminating the diamond surface and it also was found to yield the negative electron affinity on the surface of diamond if it's not too sciencey for your program and also lower work function in a very inexpensive and non-toxic way. So basically sustainable. So as a recipient of uh, these prestigious scholarships uh, and awards, you know, like the Zuchi Smith Scholarship and the Chinese Council Scholarship and many others, can you, uh, you know, elaborate on the application process and how did you manage to grapple all of them? How do you believe that these honors have influenced your academic and professional journey? Definitely. So I would first, I would say uh, man gets whatever he strives for. This is what our holy books teach us. So I would say seek what interests you, make up your mind and do your work positively. If you have sincerity for any job, like anything you want to do in your life, if you have sincerity, if you're very sincere about that and you are very much interested in that, you will definitely work hard for to achieve that. So this is what I did. So first of all, I would like to answer your question in a different way. This is in general for like that audience which want to pursue different degrees or want to get a job abroad or want to settle their life abroad. So first of all, if you just want to get a job abroad, abroad and want to settle abroad then the key is get a master's degree in countries like US or Australia or UK Europe once you get a master's degree you get work visas and then you get work visas then you can uh, live in those countries do your work earn money and get settled but if you want to do a scholarship but the master's degrees are in these countries are very expensive they cost a fortune but there are different scholarships as well which are very competitive but you can achieve those by properly treading the path to, to to getting those scholarships like for example making your cvs in a very you know professional way writing your sops or personal statements in a very scientific if you're pursuing the science program so yeah so if you want to move abroad and want to earn money then the easiest thing is to go for a master's degree if you go for a master's degree that's very really expensive in countries like uk us other western countries european countries or australia but if you want to get a scholarship for a master's degree that's also possible but that's very really hard to get because these scholarships generally are very competitive but definitely achievable but if you want to go for a research or a phd program you need to make sure you are ready for it because if you are not ready for it and you get a program to study for like four years phd degrees for three to four years which is a long time you will literally be frustrated if you are not ready for it so you have to ready yourself i have seen many people asking me i want to go abroad for phd program and in the end semester in their masters or after their masters and the things then pile up and they feel like they are not able to do anything except to be frustrated so you will have to prepare your application process application material during the end semesters of your master's degree and you need to appear for IELTS and GRE exam at least beforehand before you start making your mind before you start searching for the universities because IELTS and GRE exam these are very much necessary these are requirements in the western countries especially not in Taiwan and China definitely so if you keep your application material ready by the end of your master's degree you can then start applying at different universities across the globe and emailing the professors that is the standard way of standard way of applying for phd programs i would say then all you need to do is if you want to apply for a phd program in the uk for example the first step is make sure you are ready second step is go for ielts and gre and the third step is apply to the university program because like the general admission like we do in schools like application form things like that then the fourth thing is emailing the professor side by side because the professor needs to assess you if the professor does not assess assess you your capabilities then he will not recommend you as his potential phd student and the cv and the sop that you write you need to show some caliber some potential through your cv and statement letters as well and get it checked by professional people experienced people again and again don't rush things so these are the general ways by which you can get any scholarship or at least try for different scholarships in my case when i was doing my phd in taiwan as i said earlier i applied for the functional nanomaterials phd program and then i mentioned the process 
procedure was this, which I'm saying. So then I, in the application form I itself, I mentioned that I want to be considered for the Zuchism scholarship, which they did. And my center, the School of Physics Center for Functional Nanomaterials, they literally fought for this uh, scholarship to be given to me, which I came to know later when I came to this university. So you have to make sure that your professor is very much interested in you so that he can fight for this scholarship to be awarded to you. Uh, finally, like, what are your long-term career goals and how do you, you know, envision leveraging these diverse skill set and research experiences to make significant contributions you know, to your field and uh, society as a whole? I would say uh, my research, making any contributions to my field, to that point, I would say I consider my piece of research as a drop in a big, big ocean. Nanoscience and nanotechnology is something which everybody is doing today, and there is still a lot to learn. In my current research associate position in the School of Earth Sciences, I am learning and researching sustainable biogenic ways of making nanoparticles. That's by using the bacteria, I'm trying to synthesize magnetic nanoparticles from the industrial waste waters. This field is something which I have not explored before. So maybe tomorrow I will end up having another postdoctoral position where I would learn or I will explore different field in nanoscience. So basically, I won't say that my research will make any big change in the field, but definitely every research is a contribution to the literature. And on top of that, when it comes to the society, so I, I would definitely want to go into academia and try to help more people because I believe it's now time to deliver. So I would want to go into teaching so that I can convey to people what I have gained in all these years. So uh, finally concluding this session, uh, do you have any guidance or uh, you know uh, thoughts for students uh, that you want to put forward? with uh, thoughts regarding the scholarship so basically when we when it comes to studying abroad in when i was doing my secondary school education and also in my bachelor's degree i never thought that i would go abroad because i thought only those people who are rich they go abroad or only those people who are extremely lucky and they do something marvelous in their career they only get the chance of uh, going abroad in different universities and working in different research institutions but the things i came to know later on was to Totally different. I would like to say strive and struggle no matter how anxious and depressed you are and how hopeless you feel. Pray and try. That's the key. That's the solution. So whatever you want to do, Allah says don't be hopeless of the mercy of your Lord. What we need as Kashmiris is this in general. Regarding scholarships, there are many scholarships in various universities across the globe meant for students coming from various countries and various ethnicities, which we do not know until people like me, they come on social media and tell people like these scholarships. So for example, this is Chisme scholarship. It was not known. Nobody knew it. Almost nobody knew it because there were two more Kashmiri guys who got it before me, but I never heard about them or about them getting the scholarship. And if do not find any person from the Kashmir, then they will give it to any student from India. So see, then we would be missing on this scholarship. And this scholarship is something you can compare to the Commonwealth scholarship or Chemining scholarship. Uh, it's not as prestigious as those scholarships, but the monthly stipend and the research costs they provide are at par with those scholarships as well so you need to get exposure you need to get out of your comfort zone and start searching use your internet for the best and start looking for different scholarships in different universities dig into the websites that's what i can say thank you so much Samula, for being with us today and uh, we wish you all the best thank, thank you so much thank you for having me